Hello there my friends. Well today we're going to be doing one of the most uh, basic and the most common uh, seat repairs that you're probably ever going to see is this wear spot right here on the driver's seat. So people getting in and out all the time that's going to be the most common. Um, you're going to see this all the time. So I'm going to show you how to replace the two worn seat panels right here because everything else is just fine. So we're gonna replace these two panels and we're gonna have a happy customer, all right? So the first technique of the day is gonna be technique number 85. Okay, so what technique number 85 is, is removing this cover here without removing the seat from the truck. Okay, one of the extra services that I provide for my customers is I never take the seat out of the vehicle if it's got one of these okay and you know what that is okay we're not going to take the seat out because i don't want to unplug that yellow airbag wire and then leave my customer with some pain having to go get the airbag reset at the dealer or whatever some people say just to uh you know disconnect the battery but even i don't do that because I don't want them to have to reset the radio and anything else that they have that's preset on, on, on the battery. So I make it pretty painless for the customer. So I'm going to show you how to get that seat cover, bottom seat cover there off without removing the seat from the truck. So the first thing I like to do is clear my workspace. So uh, you got spider webs here which means that there was a spider uh, if you do see the spider um, and he sees you, uh, it only hurts for a few seconds. So anyway, let's get started. Get this off right here. So what I use is I use my handy dandy uh, hook tool. I've had this thing here for many years. I don't even remember when I got this thing. But anyway, you might want to use something that's similar to this anyway. So what you're going to do is you got to get behind there and when you get behind there what you're going to see hopefully if I can get this to focus is there's going to be a circle clip back there so you got to hook it with a hook tool and pop it out this here will give you a better idea of what I was just talking about so you have your circle clip and you can get something like this you've seen these before at Harper Freight right so what you do is you get it and you hook it right here and you pull that clip Remove the side panel. Now we have access to under here will be some C hook. It's called C hook. What it is, it's a little plastic thing. I'll show you here in a second. Once I get this loose, I'll show it to you. The hook tool is another great tool to use for seat hook. So this is what seat hook looks like. It's a plastic hook and it hooks onto usually like the springs or the edge of the metal seat frame. So this this um, hook tool, what I like to do is I like to get it back inside like that and that way you can hook it into the seat hook like this and you can pull it and to dislodge it from the from the seat. So I'm going to do this all the way around. There's going to be some here in the back. Under here. There will be some in the front. Under here. And also on the side. So I'm going to work on that here. There's the dreaded yellow airbag wire right there. The plug. And I am not going to touch that. And voila, that's, that's French for ta-da. 
personally I find this much easier and quicker than removing the seat anyway so why would you want to take all that extra time that you know you can use for an extra long lunch or you know get home a little early to your family or something like that you know just do it this way and you don't have to bother with them taking out bolts or anything well depending on the vehicle that you're working on uh, sometimes it is easier to take the four bolts out that way you can tilt the seat around and that way you have access to your seat hooks um, but most cars will come apart pretty much the same way um, this one here I'd have to say is a lot easier because you don't have to remove any bolts from the mountings on the seat uh, however some cars you might have to the first thing I do is I always mark the intersections as always wherever there's going to be some kind of pleat or some kind of a intersection somewhere I will mark it so that way when we go to put it back together remember there's no guessing it all goes back together exactly the way it's supposed to So using Lucille the box cutter with a roughened up blade, I, as you know, if you've been seeing my videos, so I use the grinder to grind down that edge, which makes it a, like a serrated edge, which pops the threads a lot easier. So go ahead and take this apart for patterns now. And you can see here how that worked. So what we do is pop the threads, trying not to cut the vinyl, especially the vinyl that you're going to be reusing. I guess it wouldn't matter so much on the vinyl that is going to be tossed in the trash anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take all this apart. I'm going to come back in a second. So the reason I almost always replace these two panels right here is because if the side panel here was just fine and you want, thought that you might want to replace this top panel, what that would mean is that when you go to sew these two pieces back together again to do this top stitch or to do a French stitch, your needle would have to punch back into those original holes again. And the chances of that happening with perfection is really slim so if you don't do it in perfection and hit every hole it would look bad so we don't do that so it's a lot easier just to replace the two panels anyway that way you're doing a, a new fresh top stitch or a, a fresh French stitch What I usually do with a long section like this here, just make some reference marks. Just only need a couple. So that way, when you go to sew it back together again, you can match up those marks. I don't know if you can see them right there, it's a little dark, but. What I do then is instead of wasting more time trying to take it apart, what I will do is I will just cut it to get it apart. Just 
just like that. Now I have my two patterns. When I go to make my new pattern, because I cut it with the scissors on this edge here, what I'll do is I'll just add back in that 3 8 inch. So, drop my pattern. Just like that. Put in my reference marks. Like that. Make the rest of the pattern. You know, you don't have to spend a whole bunch of time drawing it out. Because remember, we're trying to do production here. Time is money. So the faster you can get through it, the faster you can move on to your next project. Okay, because there's there's a pad on the back side of this pattern here, what we are going to do is we're going to also be adding some pad onto our pattern. So what we'll be doing is we'll be trimming this on the outside of our mark like that so we have our new pattern next we're going to glue the pattern onto the foam For this pattern, you see how it looks fairly complicated, but we're going to simplify this big time. So for this edge, add on the, the 3 8 inch that we're missing because I cut it with the scissors. Like that. Put our reference marks. Okay, so this one here has to be folded under. So what I do is I will mark the edge and I will leave about, I will add about a one inch so that way that could be folded over. You can see it's right there. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out this here. And I'm really going to make this all one piece. Instead of all these multiple pieces that you see everywhere. That's what I meant by simplifying. So we turned that into that. Okay, let's go ahead and sew up the pattern. So what we're doing here is just sewing right on our mark. Whether if you use chalk or you use a china marker like I did here. This is the area that we have to be folded under. Now what we'll do is trim this away. So we're trying to do is right next to that thread there without actually cutting it. Just trim it like that all the way around. Just like that. After changing the top thread to its proper color in this case, which in this case is just going to be a gray. So we'll go ahead and start putting these two pieces here together. You can see the reference marks right here. That's what we're trying to line up as we're sewing it back together again.
lock your stitch. Always remember to do that. So it's not coming apart on you later. What you really want to do is you want to duplicate the size of the stitch here. So it's not a real long stitch, so I'm going to guess about a six. So on a six on the on the machine anyway. So what I mean by that is six right there. So anyway, I'm going to try that first. So I'm just going to take the original and I'm just going to start sewing right next to that that original thread right there. Put the needle down in one of the holes and then just start sewing next to the stitch. Take a look at it. See what you think. So what I am seeing that that's pretty darn close. It looks like a little bit more. What I have it is at about six, so it's probably really about a five and a half. But that's pretty darn close, I think. <laughs> Once you're finished, nobody's gonna have anything to compare it against anyway. So don't hurt yourself. Don't get brain hurt trying to figure it out. So now we're gonna go ahead and do our top stitch. Just like that. So there we go. Out with the old and in with the new. Let's go ahead and put these back together again. So normally it would just be a matter of putting these two back together again, put the cover back on the cushion, put it back in the car. But this one here is going to need some foam repair. So I'm going to go ahead and fix all that foam before I put the new cover on. I can see that there's also some damage here. So I'm going to go ahead and do those repairs. I used to charge for that. Um, but some time ago, many oh, a few years ago, oh, I guess, I decided I wasn't going to be charging customers for foam repairs anymore because it don't really just takes a few minutes to do, and I let them know that I do that free of charge, and you know it earns you brownie points with your customers, and they they feel like they're getting more value for their money when you tell them that you included something in the price for them. So this just another service I do for my customers.
trim it out. Now, we've got new foam. Just like that. Lastly, what I'll do is I'll take some quarter inch foam like this one here, and I'm gonna put it over the top of the repair. And there you have it. You have one nice and neat phone repair. Now your customer is like super happy. Okay, time to go put it back in the truck. Okay, let's put it back in reverse order. So it's just a matter of putting all the heat, all the seat hook back together on all four corners. I'm gonna do that real quick. There we go. A couple screws and a few minutes later, She's back together. So, there we have another successful repair done. Well, till the next time, we'll see ya.